Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. My dear students of Masters Final Year, how you folks are doing? I hope you people are in a hail and hearty mood and will give give me a rapt attention. And in my today's class, I will discuss about mysticism and love in Whitman's poetry. And initially, I will discuss about mysticism in Whitman. Mysticism is not a philosophy or doctrine, but rather a tem temperament or disposition. Whitman had no coherent philosophy of life, but he certainly shows a strong note of mysticism and transcendentalism in his poetry not a pure mystic. Whitman could not be the traditional mystic. He did not subscribe to the negation and denial enjoined by traditional mysticism. He believes that the spiritual experience is possible and even desirable without sacrificing, sacrificing the senses. Whitman is a transcendentalist, but he celebrates sex and the senses at the same time. Some of myself and several of earlier poems show his strange fusion of spiritualism and sensualism. His acceptance and recognition of the body makes him different from other mystics. In I Sing the Body Electric, he sings of the human body and senses quest for the divine in his later poetry, mysticism in its purer senses is evident. Passage to India celebrates the progress of the human soul conquering the earth, but there is the belief that the soul should seek further, seek God through the universe till nature and man shall be disjoined and refused no more. In poems such as Prayer of Columbus, and whispers of heavenly death to mysticism is dominant faith in the unity of the whole oneness of all Whitman's concept of self the I of his poems is a part of the poet's mysticism the I of his poems is easily identified with the smallest created object as well as the greatest this feeling of oneness with all, this sense of divinity of all created things is a mystical element. In crossing Brooklyn Ferry, the poet has achieved the unity of all mankind. The simple, compact, well-joined scheme, myself disintegrated, everyone disintegrated, yet part of the scheme. The vision, of, the vision is intuitive. The oneness and unity extends to the sphere of time, past, present and future are joined. The mystical element in leaves of grass is clear, even though it seems difficult to reconcile it with Whitman's strong materialism. On the whole, Whitman's temperament is unsuited to the passive passivity of the Oriental. It is possible that Whitman, out of the multiple obscure sources and out of his own soul, creates a unique mysticism designed for America, a democratic mysti mysticism available to every man on equal terms, embracing both the body and the soul, science and myth, life and death, and active and passive, material and spiritual. But whatever the ultimate nature of the mysticism, it must be granted a central role in the meaning of his greatest poetry in the leaves, leaves of grass. Now, let me, my dear Stephen, talk about love and sex in Whitman's poetry. Sexual love, basic metaphor, Walt Whitman has been called the prophet and mouthpiece of sexual love. He was a fearless pioneer in treating sexual love 
with a healthy frankness in his poems, love is necessary to the poet's understanding of the universe as it must be for anyone who tries to see into the heart of creation. Sex in all its aspects, Whitman's rebellion was particularly directed against the traditional approach and puritanism that forbade moral lapses and weaknesses. He speaks for frankness and realism in his poetry, through me forbidden voices, voices of sexes and lusts, voices veiled and I, voices indecent by me clarified and transformed. Sexual love is vital and essential to the human personality. Life is incomplete without it, and through it one may find meaning in the universe. Whitman explores the terrors and inversions of sex, as well as its sunny and beautiful aspects. Sex, sex is an equalizer, realism in treatment of sexual love. Whitman is bold and vivid in his singing of sexual love. He glorifies the body and thrills at physical contact. He celebrates the turbulent appetites of the flesh with exhilarating frankness. However, one cannot term this open treatment of sexual love indecent or obscene. <coughs> sexual love is part of his concept of the self-seeking oneness in all. Sexual love is a relation between two willing souls based on perfect understanding and mutual agreement. This is a step to, towards unity. Sex is necessary for procreation. It is linked with the life force of nature. It is an aspect of love which permits all things. Sex contains all bodies, souls, meanings, proofs, purities, delicacies, pride, the material mystery, the seminal milk, all hopes, benefic benefic benefactions, bestowals. Rejection of sexual love is a rejection of God, in Whitman's opinion, for sexual energy is connected to the concept of cosmic unity. It is linked to the pulsating force that vitalizes all. Body and soul are of equal importance and Whitman glorifies the body and every person completes himself by uniting with others. Self-love also pervades Whitman's poetry, the self absorbed other things of the world through the medium of love. In Songs of Myself, he says, I will go to the bank by the wood and become undisguised and naked. I am mad for it to be in contact with me. But this self-love extends to love of all mankind. It is a case of diffused love, as the poet is the symbol of every person. Whitman's development in the treatment of love. We find gradual progression in Whitman's dealing with the theme of love. Whitman began with the pleasures and joy of the senses only. He was more the poet of the body than of the soul. In the second phase, he turned more to the spiritual realities of life. In the last period, he, his concept of love became all inclusive, assuming cosmic, assume, assuming cosmic dimensions. My dear students, I hope you have heard me very patiently and uh, with these few words, I would like to conclude my discussion for today. Thank you very much.